Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Blue Ridge Silverhound. Hope you guys are having a fantastic uh, day so far. Uh, so the topic of this video is simply going to be um, how to value a coin and determining when the right time uh, it is to sell it to maximize the amount of money that you could get for your collectible coin or piece of currency. Um, I'm willing to bet probably a lot of you aren't aware that there are specific times not only during the week, but also there are times during throughout the year um, in which it's optimal to sell a coin. All right. I actually have my handy dandy beautiful calendar. We're going to take a quick look at the months, just kind of assess certain specific periods throughout the year, which are uh, going to be kind of like hotbeds, depending on the type of coins and stuff that you have. Whether it's the lesser expensive type, you know, stuff that, um, you, you know, is quite prominent out there. Or some of the high, rare, graded stuff that, that you know, uh, not a lot of us actually come across. But, you know, maybe a coin that's been passed down to you from a loved one. Uh, and you're just ready to move on from it for whatever reason that may be. We are going to discuss uh, just kind of determining the value of a coin. And then um, sending it off to whatever method of, uh, I guess, liquidation, <laughs> you know, for uh, getting money for your coin. So, first of all, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the calendar. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start out with the first month, which is not that. This is an awesome calendar, by the way. Ugh, yeah. All right, so there's the first month. Let's uh, look probably backwards. Uh, January. Is January a good month to sell coins? I am going to say yes, indefinitely it's going to be a good month to sell coins. Low low dollar value and high dollar value coins um, you know, are would be great to sell in January. Okay, the big reason why is that the holidays are over. All right, it's a month of recovery, and then we have a couple of prominent auctions that have just occurred in January. All right, and um uh, it's, it's only good, you're going to see January as kind of like the base model month um, in which you're going to see lots of activity for a couple months. So that's January for you. Uh, the next month, February. Let's talk about February. All right. So are you guys aware of what happens in February? Okay. This year we have 29 days. Okay. That, that's not the big uh, selling point of the month of February for this year. But February, everybody who expects to receive money back on their income tax are going to file in February. People, a, a buddy of mine just filed his taxes because he knows he's going to get back money. So February is without a shadow of a doubt, one of the biggest months for just everything. Okay. If you want to buy a new TV, guess what? February is a great time because you're going to be receiving an income tax. I'm not going to be one of those people. <laughs> the last couple of years I've owed tax uh, because I work for myself, you know, but with uh, all that being said, uh, a vast majority of the people that do have money coming back in the form of some sort of refund, um, usually they, they're out there spending it, okay? And where are they spending it on? They're spending it on, on consumer goods, uh, collectible items, coins, currency, toys, yeah, sports cards. Yeah, you name it. It's it's a very intense month, a very active month for the change of hands of money. All right, February, and then we get into the next month, March. March is what I would consider to be kind of like the penultimate kind of like crest of activity. Uh, usually, the first like week or two into March. All right, so the end of February going into March, generally people will have their money and they will be shopping. All right, so you're going to see a lot of a uh, lot of activity online, uh, e-commerce, Amazon, and when it comes to coin sales, this is a very active time period, the month of March. Now, as we get into March, and then we dive into April. All right. This is where I would say things begin to slow down a bit. Okay, the people that owe money will wait till the very last minute to file their taxes. Hi, I'm one of those. Um, and usually sales will slow down specifically 
on the high graded expensive coins all right so if you have one of those to sell right now you would certainly think about listing them right now or consigning with an auction house to sell it within the next 30 days you're going to get the most amount of money for your coin at the beginning of the year but april 1st is what i consider to be kind of like the uh a point of no return all right uh for the first quarter of the year all right so that's april for you may whoops i skipped a month skipped a month guys all right april showers bring may flowers okay uh in this particular case um coin sales are usually flat although your lower dollar items still sell pretty briskly at this uh, point so if you had errors varieties you have raw coins okay a lot of you probably do have that um we'll have an easy time of selling your coins during this time all right so here's where things begin to take a drastic turn the month of june all right the month of june is typically referred to as kind of like we don't have time to buy coins because we are planning our vacations right all right raise your hands <laughs> how many of you are in that mode like Oh, uh, yeah, I, I, if I don't need to spend any money, I won't. All right, so June, from June till July to August, and then into about the first week or so of the year, or uh, first week of September, okay, you're going to see flat to little availability of some of the high-end coins for purchase. Because people know this, a lot of the uh, the bigger prominent collectors and dealers, they take the summer off. All right. Now there is, uh, the, you know, the, there is a couple shows that happen during the summer. Um, the the World's Fair of Money, I believe, is during the summer. It's like August. That's usually kind of like the uh, the first big show to cap off what is usually a very slow summer. Now. For 2019, it was anything but. We've seen kind of um, higher than average uh, sales, okay, especially for the high-end coins, which I would say the high-end coins sales dip and they slow down by about 10 to 20 percent compared to another month earlier in the year, like um, a February or March. <laughs> so keep that in mind. If you have some of these high-grade rarities, you will probably wait. Um, either at the beginning of the year, right around tax time, or wait until fall picks up. All right, so right around mid-September is where we begin to see kind of like this slow shift into um, uh, the dealers coming back and they're starting to buy coins. Now, the dealers in general are always active, but you have a lot of the bigger kind of like online folks who uh, take the summer off. All right, and that's that's very good. So um, we, we see sales dip on the, the higher end stuff. If you're still selling the inexpensive stuff, you're going to do okay. Um, but you'll probably get a little bit less money than, say, if you had sold it earlier in the year around tax time. Uh, so that that is something to consider if you're selling your coins. Uh, so September, we begin to see a change. October into November... All right, we see brisk sales of coins across the board. All right, it's not quite tax time briskness, but we see a lot of action uh, in the coin market, uh, you know, for, for people buying and selling coins, usually this time of year. From September 15th to around the first week of December, we begin to see an uptick in the activity levels of coins across the board. In addition, we've seen also a 10 to 20, 25% increase in the amount of money that people receive for their coins during this time. All right, and then finally, we have December. Okay, December is off to a hot start for about the first two weeks. Keeping in mind, from about mid-November to around mid-December, okay, it's a very short window, we also see the, uh, the sales of precious metal items rise and enhance all because of that time of year okay it's gift giving season season so people are actually um there's more activity on precious metals 
Uh, not necessarily the price of PMs going up, but you're seeing a lot more change hands during this time of year. Again, have everything to do with the Christmas holiday season. So, and then the cycle starts back over after the first of the year. Keeping in mind, two weeks prior to Christmas, uh, it slows down tremendously. It slows down quite a bit. And uh, people are looking to purchase regular consumer goods in lieu of uh, some of the uh, kind of like collectible stuff. Okay, so we do see a little bit of a, a downtick uh, the last couple weeks of December. Uh, but all in all, that's kind of like, and I've monitored and I've researched the just the kind of like the, the market trends and levels throughout the year. And, um, you know, th that is what we're looking at. So if you have coins to sell right now, I would say jump on it because you have until about the first week of March to make something of it if you're looking to pick up some extra money and uh, pretty much sell anything you want. Um, not saying that you could... Uh, it, ask your own price on a lot of it you still have to work within the kind of like the acceptability level of market valuation now speaking of market valuation okay how do you value a coin um and what's the best resource to use online okay there are a lot of resources outside the box like the red book guide right here okay that a lot of people use and they actually take into consideration the printed numbers that are actually in here the um, the actual usefulness of the red book price guide has nothing to do with the pricing schematic whatsoever but it it serves more of an, an informational like load for you in the event that you don't know anything about your coins you want to pick up a little bit of a history lesson so you just open up the red book and bam there you go and then the pricing should be secondary um, generally what we're going to be looking at when it comes to determining the value, it's going to be, be based on a few different criteria. Is your coin you're selling going to be raw? Is your coin you're selling going to be graded? All right. There's a number of different kind of, uh, uh, resources that you could use. Uh, there are the generic price guides that you could download, um, in the form of an app on your phone, your smartphone device. You could always do that, but again, anything, any pricing schematic price guide that you pull that is uh, visual in a sense that it never gets updated except maybe twice a year or a printed price guide, the pricing is inaccurate at that point. So what I like to do, eBay is one of the best resources to use, bar none, for determining the value of a coin right now. All right, so we're going to go into collectibles and art, and we're simply going to go into a coin section, coins and paper money. And uh, from here, it's really like, what are you researching? Okay, so let's go ahead and try out uh, bullion for this first exercise, silver bullion. And uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Some of you are probably going to ask, well, what's the 2019 enhanced reverse proof silver eagle selling for the one that just caught fire all of a sudden at the end of the year last year um enhanced reverse proof silver eagle let's say you have one that's raw that you were actually able to purchase on the u.s mint website lucky you by the way so we have a number of listings we have 767 of them okay so when you're determining the value of your coins do not use any of the pricing that's in black okay the reason why is that item hasn't sold yet. That is the asking price. You can always use this to help gauge kind of like an asking price and then an acceptable like uh, best offer option. You could do that as well. But we're going to go ahead and scroll down a ways. On the left-hand side, you see this uh, show only uh, section here. and We're going we're to go ahead and uh, see specifically sold items. All right, and uh, we are going to use the ended recently. So these are going to be the recently ended listings, and it's going to work its way down. So it's going to be the most freshest of sales, and it'll work its way down. Um, so there are a few things factoring into uh, today's sales on eBay and Amazon is that now they will be charging state uh, sales tax, which stinks, man, but, you know, it was bound to happen. It was bound to happen. 
So if you're looking to sell off that one example that's ungraded, okay, here's one example that sold for $924 shipped. All right, this is current real-time sale as of February 5th. Guess what day it is? February 5th. It sold this morning. All right, so this one right here, this is what you would kind of expect to sell one that is still in its U.S. Mint government packaging. Um, and then that's it. All right, and then you guys are wondering, what's what's a graded one selling for? Well, here's one here. NGC Proof 70 first release coin um, that's sold for a best offer option. All right, so the prices have dropped as expected on Proof 70 examples. Of course, this is an NGC graded coin. If you have a PCGS, we'll simply scroll down and then see the first Proof 70 PCGS example that sold yesterday. Okay, that's about as fresh as it goes. And then the best offer option has been accepted. They were asking $29.79, and they probably accepted like $26, $2,700 for the coin. Now, the X factor in all of this is PCGS is also certif uh, certifying or authenticating the actual certificate of authenticity. That's what this white thing is right here. But as you can see, that's how much approved 70 is selling for. And, uh, you know, that, that's a buy now option. Someone, ex they, this seller accepted a best offer. Here's a 2019 S proof 69. So this is right here. Sells no better than an actual raw coin. 895 bucks. They actually sold for a little bit less. So if you have a Proof 69 graded coin, that's how much you would expect for that. All right, and you just go on down the line. As you can see, there's a number of sales from yesterday. These things are still trading hands uh, pretty regularly. All right, there is a distinct price difference between the Proof 69 and Proof 70 coins, of course. So keep take that into consideration. Uh, but if you needed a quick $1,000 today to sell this, you know what to expect from your raw 2019s enhanced reverse all right so that's the first example okay let's get into something that's a little bit more mainstream with a lot of uh collectors today and that's stuff that we come across in pocket change let's say we have a 2000 wide am lincoln cent all right i get i see this all the time all right so we are in the coin section and uh we will use the small cents page in here and we will do Lincoln Memorials. So it always helps when you drill down to the actual section that pertains. So let's go ahead and type in Lincoln wide AM. And let's see how much these things are selling for. All right. So again, we disregard just all of the ask prices for stuff that's still live and available for purchase and then we go to sold listings all right well what are these things selling for today well there's one right here it's a 2000 wide am uh as you can see it is it is the attributed variety uh this is the proof reverse of course if you guys aren't familiar with it this one sold january 29th so there hasn't been any that has sold within the last six days for uh, $5.19 shipped. All right, so this guy did not make a whole lot of money. And then here's another lot of three, 1998 and 2000 wide AM. So this has five coins. Sold for 30 bucks. Uh, the average being $6 a piece. And they, you know, a couple, a couple of them look pretty good. A couple of them look a little bit brown. Uh, circulated so we're expecting anywhere from five to six bucks a piece for the wide AMs um, graded ones are even in here here's another one that sold close to six dollars and you get the big picture all right so that's how you use the eBay search tool to determine prices for your coins today again right now is a good time to sell coins uh, people are going to be receiving their tax income refunds so that plays a huge difference. Now, there are other sites like coppercoins.com. This is Chuck Daughtry's site for uh, Lincoln Cent attributions. And there is also a price guide in here as well. So we're going to use 1960 
Lincoln. So this is all Lincoln cents, by the way. There, there are no nickels, dimes, anything of that sort. All right. So as you can see, uh, you type in 1960, you do Philadelphia and Denver on the, uh, whatchamacallit, and then you get to see all of the different varieties. Uh, this is one of my favorite sites. Again, bookmark this page if you haven't done so already. And just take a look at everything in here. Uh, I mean, there is a wealth of information, and then you have kind of like a generalized baseline price for the coins in their respective uh, grades. And uh, what's really cool is it's pretty close. The, the pricing is relatively close as to what you would expect for a lot of these coins. Uh, Chuck does a great job keeping in tune with the market value for a lot of these. But it's also got probably the best photo references that you will ever see on a website. So if you have varieties, coppercoins.com, Variety Vista, uh, doubleddie.com uh, is another great one. That's actually, actually Wexler's site. Uh, that, that'll be for all the other denominations. All right, so this is a great resource. And if you have graded coins, the PCGS website, there is a price guy. All right, and this is what I would say I would use to determine a baseline price for a nice graded coin. Okay, so for this particular exercise, we are going to take a look at Morgan Dollars and let's check out some of the Carson Cities. Let's see how much like Mid State 63 Carson City coins are. And uh, you just scroll down to the first one. Here's 1878 CC, it is 63. Now there is Mid State Proof Like and Dimple, which is Deep Mirror Proof Like. Uh, attribution. So you would just, if you have this coin and it says just a mid state 63, okay, a baseline is 450. All right. So you would probably put 450 or best offer on eBay for a coin like this, or take a look at sold auctions, see how much these have sold for. 1879 is a key date year. That's a prohibitively expensive coin to a lot of folks. But check and see if you have one that's like a mid state 62, 63. You have coin that's worth many thousands of dollars. If it's a proof like, it's worth more than that. You're in a five-figure territory here. All right. So, you know, 1880 is another good date. That's semi-key there. Uh, and, yeah, you just go on down the line. It's easy to use. This is one of the best tools. There's 1882 CC. This is a common date. This is one that typically you would come across and see more often than anything else. So, that's cool. All right. So, again, using discretion in how you use the price guide is going to matter quite a bit. Um, the price guide feature on PCGS and NGC, okay, are simply just baseline tools. Okay, don't if it says $300... Do not expect to get exactly $300. There's going to be a variance somewhere in there. Again, selling your coins at, at the right time of the year makes a huge difference. If you're going to do a listing on eBay, why would you sell it at a three-day auction? You want to get as much, much exposure on it as possible. Do a seven or ten-day um, listing on those type of coins. Now, if you need the money now, you're going to get less money now. Uh, that just makes all the sense in the world. Um, but that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you kind of go about finding out the value of your coin from scratch. If you didn't want to buy a Red Book price guide like I have here or any of the other actual paper reference material, hop online. There's a lot of different uh, resources to use. Uh, I have all these bookmarked, by the way. Uh, I visit these sites quite often. Uh, and they're a great source of news as well. So that's going to wrap it up for this one. Hopefully you guys uh, got a little takeaway. This is kind of like piggybacking off of uh, how to list coins on eBay. Uh, as you guys saw, I listed three coins. And uh, we have a lot of watchers. And I appreciate you guys checking those out. Um, and as always, like, share, subscribe. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, go ahead and throw them down below. Uh, either myself or some of the other seasoned 
coin guys will chime in to uh, your inquiry. And uh, as always, like, share, subscribe, hit that bell for instant notifications. As always, Coinaholics, we are discovering together. Thank you for joining in on this video. Uh, it's more great information. Hopefully it helped out. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care.